Hello, I'm Gurm Meats. I run Office Sign Architecture and Design, which sounds so grand, but really it's just me. A few days ago, I met with one of my sisters, Calvin, and talked about today my idea of presenting lots of serious architectural pictures describing and enforcing the idea of me being an architect. She said that was okay, fine, a bit boring, but she thought of me not as an architect, but more as a midwife. And it's not because I go on about delivering projects, nurturing ideas. It was because she had noticed that when I spoke to her about design, I mentioned a lot about building relationships with other people and getting the best out of others. She had a point, and that's what I'd like to talk to you all about. Of course, I was happy just to show you moody, obscure images of some previous projects. This image shows an element of the Jack Hobbs Kids Community Centre refurbishment, which we completed in 2010. The zigzag wall and glazing, named the singing wall, is used to encourage the children to paint onto it. However, what I realised was that actually I'd rather talk about this image first. Uh, the head in the corner belongs to Nicola Avery. She commissioned me for my first project in 2008. My work generally benefits from a very strong conceptual grounding, and this is drawn firstly from the clients. Therefore, the client-architect relationship is especially important to me. This relationship is built on trust and needs to be nurtured. Before delivering any baby, the architect midwife should be brilliant at listening. We should all be great at allowing the client space to express themselves. A client needs to be given space in order then for meaningful spaces to be created. But what does this mean or what do I mean? Well, it starts by asking all of my clients, not about Santa Claus, um, uh, I ask all my clients to write a wish list. This sounds like a client brief, but actually it's slightly different. Instead of a list of what they want in the space, I ask them how they see themselves using the space. What are you doing, not how are you doing it? This then allows me the space for my own creativity emerge and grow as I've allowed space for theirs to do the same. I then take this list, try to understand it, reinterpret it into a set of goals, and formulate this into a concept. Once a trusting co-creation relationship has begun, everybody is, is empowered within a two-way process, so both the client and the architect. The design process for me has never been about a grand imposition of ideas on blank sheets of paper. I believe it's far much more about a collecting of, of resources. So from the client, not only from the client, but from the design team, from the brief, the local context, for example. And that for whatever scale of project, be it new build or refurbishment, architectural form is continually being remade, remolded and reformed. So this collecting of resources continues on with, the, with building contractors. This is Les Novak, a contractor who I've worked with a couple of times before. I, I enjoy how a design can change after chatting to builders who have pretty much seen it all before. As an architect and designer, again, I'm thinking of remaking and remolding spaces. I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel. And now for some moody architectural photography. Well, what can be achieved after going through this process? This is East End Road a home refurbishment completed in 08. The client's family had specific dietary requirements to separate meat and milk dishes, so the concept of static and movement was developed, which resulted in this irregular window arrangement and brick pattern. This project, Kin Restaurant in Clerkenwell, was completed in 2011 and was a design collaboration with the wonderful Kai Design, who are here, also Hackney-based. The building used to be a Chinese restaurant, and the clients, Kwok and Lisa, uh, were very young restaurateurs, wanted to open a Thai eatery. So Kwok and Lisa clearly wanted an industrial looking aesthetic, but we played with this idea to try and reference the previous architectural elements. So the strongest element here was the line of the original staircase, and going in the opposite direction, seen on the left, the new staircase. The food's also great, so please do check it out. The Hackney Shed, which is the next slide, is based in Hackney, and it was completed in 2010. It's a garden office for a filmmaker and a writer. The design was developed to use as many standard sizes of panels and timber as possible in order to reduce cutting and wastage of materials. The high levels of insulation allow the shed to be occupied all year round. Sometimes my client is not a couple of people, uh, but a group of kids. So for the Jack Hobbs Community Center, which you've already seen, I ran workshops in collaboration with Ros Croker to understand what the kids would want from the space and what they imagined themselves doing in the spaces. Surprise, surprise, we found that the kids just wanted to draw on the walls. So on one side of the proposal, we have quite formal office rooms and a staircase, and on the other side, there's this singing wall, which is split into segments. A whole linear wall mural can be composed out of children's paintings and joined together. Each child's painting is not just recognized individually, but also as part of a whole. A couple of tiny projects, what we hope to complete this summer. This is the smallest commission that we have. Um, a gazebo for a roof terrace in South London. So we try to express a lightness of design with galvanized steel and a place to enjoy the sun and gaze at the stars. This is in a sensitive conservation area. 
We've recently received planning, so we're all very happy about that. Another domestic project in South London, the photo on the left shows the existing situation at the end of Terrace House, and the image on the right describes perhaps the world's smallest art gallery running along uh, the boundary wall with square windows popping up. The client is an artist. Uh, this one is not in a conservation area, it's not listed, and we're struggling to get through planning and some things I just don't understand. Uh, back to a funny image. It's very satisfying to complete projects, but at the end, I certainly don't want to be the one holding the baby. It's not really my baby. What I mean here is that I don't want to be the architect who's created a space that just reflects me and my values. Through design and architecture, I'm not trying to showcase myself. I'm not trying to produce spaces that reveal me. That's not what it's really about. Instead, I'm trying to produce spaces in which the client reveals not just themselves, but the best of themselves. Many thanks to Dazeen, Hackney House, Beatrice and Marcus, and thank you all for listening.